I am down to the last two centers. And the way that this backdrop is going to work is I have a general idea of the direction that things go. And so the one that comes here is obviously this one. Um, we're going to find that this part should e be even easier than the others. So this isn't the hard part yet. Haven't gotten to the hard part. Not yet. That is coming. But I'm going to try to turn this just to kind of prove a point here to see the consistency that we have. So I know that this comes into here. I'm going to put all the edges in. The edge portions of this. So this comes over to here and that's good. And I'm going to replace it with this. Or this. But in any case, I'm going to turn like so. And I'll turn this back. Now you can see this is not coordinated appropriately. This isn't, isn't coordinated right. Um, but I've got a particular way of dealing with that because what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually just going to be putting in edges. I'm going to say that this is correct. And I'm going to say that this is correct. It has no choice. This is no choice to be in the proper position, and this is no choice but to be in the proper position. We don't know the relative positions, but they're proper positions. So I don't have to do anything else now that this I've got these two over here. These two are correctly placed. I just have to put corners in. So the first step in solving the last two centers of a giant cube is to put in the edge portions of the centers, especially the inner centers here. I've got these two in, so I know these two are going to be properly positioned. What I don't know is what's supposed to be properly positioned with this. If this is turned around appropriately or not appropriately, the only way to know that is to turn it around until these match up with this, until they fit in. And I don't even know if it's rotated right. It's got to be one of these guys. Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Is it this? My suspicion is that this is one of them. So what I'm going to do is going to do an algorithm of R U R I U R 2 U R I, which will keep this exactly where it is. I want these edges to be where they are. It's going to move these around until I get something that fits in with this. Then I know that that's where it's supposed to be. So that's going to be. R. Now this is interesting. This seems to come nicely with this over here. So what that tells me is that this was in the wrong place. So this is in the wrong place here. So I'm going to make this side match up with these three. So I'm going to move this in here. That tells me the proper position. And now I'm going to take this Like so. Now we're going to move this out. Now this is in the proper orientation, but now we're going to move this out. Like that. Line this up correctly. There and there. Okay. So let's consider what we did. This is in the proper position here, but I need the one to come over to here. I know that this is properly oriented because I have two that fit flush over here. I know that this edge belongs in this area here and this edge belongs in this area here because they're actually matched with corners over here. So because I have corners that are matched, I know they're okay. This is kind of suspect. I don't think that that's looking so good over here. Looking at this, this is matched with this. So I know that this uh, edge portion of the center belongs over here. The rest of these, well, one of these belongs here. Actually, I'm wondering if this belongs here. Before I move forward, I wonder if I should put that in. But, well, we'll see. In any case, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to where this is down here. And I'm going to do an old familiar algorithm, which will cause a, a known rotation. By holding it here, it'll cause these, cause these to permute around. And I'm just going to wait until any one of them fits into here flush. So it's going to permute these guys around. That's going to be... R U R I U R to you and R I. 
Don't even have to look at it to suspect that things are where I needed to be and not yet. So we got to do it again. Notice this didn't change. I'm just looking to whip these guys around. So that's... R U R I U R to you R I Okay, and look what happened. Exactly as predicted, I now have three in here because I knew I was going to whip these guys around. So I'm taking it by segments. This tells me a couple things. First off, I know these are where they're supposed to be in coordination with the center. I also know that this is an edge that belongs here. This is an edge that belongs here. And I know that these edges belong here too because there's no other possible place they can be. Or at least they're within 180 degrees of where they need to be. So now that I have these edges in, it's a question of placing corners. This corner is already placed. This corner is already placed. I come up over here, and among these edges, this corner is placed, but these are not. So now I'm going to do my two center algorithms in order to place those where, where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to turn this upside down because it would appear that three, uh, rather two of these corners are where they're supposed to be. So they're going to stay over here because they won't, they won't move around. These are going to be the ones that are going to move around. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to take this corner that's in and move it down. So this isn't the hard part either. This is the fun part because now it's not just placement. There's a little more strategy that's happening with this. So what this algorithm is going to do is it's going to take this, move it to here. This will move to uh, here. And this will move to here. I'm going to do this, go like R. UI LI U RI UI L Okay, so this is here now. This belongs over here. Problem is that I have this here and this here. They're facing in bad angles, so it's not really what I wanted. But this is in, this is in. And I'm going to have to destroy this for the purpose of creating this, which I can do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. Over here. And here's what's going to happen, if we can visualize this. I'm going to have to destroy this just to create two over here. But this will come up here, which won't be in. This will come down here, which will be in. And this will come over here, which also won't be in. But I don't want two across from each other that's in. That's not going to work. So let's do this whole rigmarole again. It's going to be R. UI. L I U R I U I L. So the results are predictable. This is in and this is in. So I've got these two in here. So the trick with this ghost cube is even doing the last two centers, you sort of have to surmise your way through it. These are in and these aren't. So now what's going to happen is that I'm going to turn this over here because then this belongs over here. So this will come up to here, this will come to here, and this will come to here. Now let's just see what happens. So we have R U I L I U R I U I L 
and L. Okay, now we can see what we've got. You can see these are in, these are in, these two are in, but this isn't. These are all in, this is in, and this is not. So we have a little bit of a problem because this comes to here and this comes to here. So we have actually something we shouldn't have, which is parity, because we have to do a swap. We have to do a even layered, even number swaps with this, which really we shouldn't have to do. For instance, this comes down to here, as you can see, I'm gonna go like this, like that. And in turn, this comes up to here. So the question becomes, how did this happen? What this means is that I have equivocated pieces somewhere. There is something that's not quite right. Oftentimes what this means is that I have to rotate something by 90 degrees. But um, just to kind of give you an example of what I mean, we'll go ahead and put these in. This will come here, which will be fine. This will come here and this will come here. Let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. So we have turn, 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 and turn. So let's see what we got. These three are fine, these three are fine, these are not fine. You can see that they have to be flip-flopped. But these are fine, good, good, and good. What this means is that there's something else that's been falsely equivocated, because I can't do an odd swap like that. I can only do an even number of swaps, so that'll be an odd swap, so there must be something else that gets three cycled with this, something else that looks exactly like this. These fit fine, so what I have to do is I have to go through, just move this over here, and see which one of these among corners over here don't belong. So it's not anything here, it's not anything here, it's not anything here. So there's something that that can be flipped like that. Because what's gonna have to happen is that to swap these, I either have to rotate something by 90 degrees, or I have to find a third one that doesn't quite belong. And that's the challenge with this. That's the challenge with most ghost cubes, but this one has an equivocation where it's forcing me to, to do an odd swap when I should only be able to do even swaps. So that's what I'm gonna to have to search for. So we're gonna pick it up from here and where I'm at right now is I'm dealing with this inner portion over here, this inner three by three by three portion of the center. I've got this in, this in, and this in. But over here now, I've got this in and these in, but these, it might be hard to visualize, but this is not, these two are not where they're supposed to be. They've actually gotta be flip-flopped. Um, so I've got this uh, center edge, I've got these center corners, but this belongs here and this belongs here. And although it might be difficult to see, they don't quite line up. But we've got a little problem here because I have to do an uh, odd swap and I'm only supposed to do an even swap. So the question is how did this happen? Everything else is lining up okay and now I have to try to navigate my way through a situation where these two have to swap. And because I can't do an uh, odd number of swaps, this appears to be something of a parity. A parity meaning that I, uh, well, I should say a parity problem. And what that means is that this is an impossible situation. Given the fact that this, is, this puzzle has a certain odd layered parity, um, I have to perform a move that cannot occur with this particular puzzle. But here's the thing. I don't look at this as a parity problem because I never did a process of reduction from one parity type, such as an even to an odd. It started odd and stayed odd. Instead, if I see a situation like this, Rather than think that I have to change my reduction, 
Instead, I think of this as a, pro a process of placement. I've got a misplacement issue. In other words, I have a situation where a piece is falsely equivocated with another piece. So you saw that I tried to search for such a piece. I saw something over here. Turns out that it was in a, in a wrong layer. The only way that this can happen is there must be a third piece that is being falsely equivocated for another. So among these two, there's a third piece in here somewhere that's, uh, that's involved. So looking around, the question is, what two pieces can be substituted for each other? Everything seems to fit in pretty nicely on all the other centers, but there must be a centerpiece, say maybe, I don't know, over here, that can be substituted for another centerpiece seamlessly. Because the only way for these two to swap is I've got to swap something else, and then it can work. So I'm going to look around, and I'm going to look for pieces that kind of look like each other. These are fairly unique. Not too many others look like them. Um, let's see, does something else look like these pieces? Maybe these? But I can tell that they're of a different size. Looking at these pieces over here, uh, looking at these center pieces, maybe these look a little bit like these. So though these seem to be in, and these are in, could it be that I can swap one piece for another? So can I swap, take this piece and swap it for this piece? And I'm honing in on these because they're kind of roughly the right size and the right shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this center piece, glide it into here and see if it actually makes sense. See if it actually fits and um, could be potentially replaced with that. So let me see, let me line things up here. Okay, so this I will move to here, and let's see what happens. And curse splat. And you can see it, it doesn't fit. So it's, it's not equivalent, so to speak. And I can prove that again over here. Let's see if we can maybe take this and move this down to here. Just to prove a point, move it here and bang. Now here's something interesting. This actually seems to fit. When I moved this piece in, it fits fairly flush over here. So I'm going to compare the two. There's this or this. Which one? It looks like it could be anyone, but the more I stare at this, the more this seems to maybe not be quite at the same level. But this one didn't seem to match this one pretty well, but let me take another look. Move this in and actually now that I look at it, it looks pretty good. So what I'm thinking is I'm thinking maybe this piece can be interchanged with this piece. And maybe that's the missing element to this. Now this center has al already been, quote, completed. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it with this. Now before I do that, let me see if this piece can be substituted also. Maybe it actually works better. I move this in and uh, not so much. Let me take it from the other way here. So that's how you get out of situations like this and you can see that that cleft doesn't really work. Is you look for the area of false equivocation. So I don't treat it the same way as a parity problem where you go from an even layer to an odd layer and find yourself in an, imp in, in an impossible situation. This is an well, it's an odd to an odd, and find yourself in what appears to be an impossible situation, but it's actually because you've substituted one piece for another. This is useful to me because now I know to search for those pieces. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to now move this into here. This will then come to here, and this will come to here. So these two will need to be flipped, and these two will need to be flipped, and that we can do. So let's do it. We'll take that, we'll take that step. Uh, let's see, it's going to come into here. So we're going to do R UI LI U. The whole time I'm praying I don't mess things up horribly. Then we move this down. Ri Ui and L. 
Okay, let's see what kind of a mess I made here. I come over to here and can you tell the difference? Can you really see a difference in what I did? In other words, when I substituted those pieces for each other, did it mess this center up? And I'm looking at it and it looks just fine. So these seem to work pretty well together. Actually, it was this center, oh, it was this center piece over here. So it seems to work pretty well. Uh, it looks a little off, I'm not so sure, but for the most part, I think it works. So now I can look and see what I've got here, and I see that this is in, these two have to be flipped, and these two have to be flipped. So what I'm going to do, for the time being, is I'm going to do that process of getting corners in appropriately. So I'm going to use this as the top, and I'm just going to flip this around as I'm moving these in. So the first step, move this into here. And that's the same algorithm here. So taking a look at what that did, this stayed the same. This is now snug where it needs to be. This is the wild card over here. So what I want to do now is I'm going to take this piece here. Let's turn this back. Like so. Turn this back, and now what I'm going to do is take this and move it to here. Right like this. So I have high hopes that we figured this out, sort of. And we can maybe fine tune things later, but let's see what we've got. So now what I'm going to do is I want to move this guy to here without destroying this. So I'm going to have to do that algorithm twice to move this into here. So at the end of the day, this will, well, this will be here, this will be up here, and this will be here, something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's take stock in what we've got. These, so far as we can see, are in, these are in, and now these are in, and this is all fine. So that little journey, in that journey, we basically got the first part of our 7x7 seven seven center, which is our 3x3x3 three by three by three portion of it. And we managed to fix something that obviously was not correct. Now, it's going to be a situation where we just have to watch this and see if this is really where it's supposed to be. But for the most part, it looks like it's a pretty good, um, pretty good bet that that's where it is. So, now we take this out over here. Now understand, in a 6x6, six well, the rules will be very different. But now what I'm going to do for these centers is I'm going to have to extend it out a little bit more. What I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do these guys here, just because they're easiest to do. These are the extended edges towards here. So let's see if we can't surmise and reason this out a little bit. Now on the 5x5, five five, I was done. But I've got to go the next step here.